what is going on guys hope you're doing freaking awesome in this video i'm going to show you how to do training loops from scratch so this means that we're no longer using model.fit uh, but rather we're doing everything by ourselves from scratch uh, if you're familiar with coding in PyTorch, then this is going to be more how you're used to training networks. Um, but anyways, let's get started. And uh, we aren't going to do anything complicated in this video in terms of what we're going to train on and the data and so on. Uh, the point is just to show you the general structure of uh, how it looks like. So the starter code right here is just some basic imports that you've seen in previous videos. Uh, we're going to use TensorFlow datasets. So if you haven't watched that video, then um, it's going to be in the top right corner. So we're loading the MNIST dataset right here. Uh, the uh, So we have a training and a test set. And then we're just, uh, so we have a function for normalize the images. And uh, all of this is from that video, just copy pasted. And then we have some very, very simple model right here, just some one convolutional layer and then one uh, dense layer and uh, let's do layers that dense here just like that and then so then let's get started and uh, what we're going to do is uh, first of all we're going to have some metrics so let's do accuracy metric is uh, keras dot metrics dot sparse categorical accuracy and then let's do first let's do the training loop so uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to train it for a number of epochs. So we're going to train it for epochs is uh, five in this case. So what we just do is we uh, we write for epoch in range epochs, or maybe we should call it num epochs. So num epochs right there. And then we could do print um, just let's do print uh, slash n and then start of uh, training epoch and then we could do I don't know, we could do it like this epoch now let's do f string and so then we're going to iterate through all of the batches in our training uh, and so we're going to do for batch index and then uh, x batch comma y batch in enumerate uh, DS train. All right, so we're going to go through DS train uh, for a number of epochs. So right here, we're going to first of all uh, write the uh, with TF gradient tape as tape, and this is for recording all of the operations that uh, we're going to do in the forward propagation, so that we can then do back propagation for the uh, the model weights. So we're going to do Y prediction is model x batch and then specify training is true then we're going to do loss is loss function right that we specified over here and we're going to uh, send in the y batch the true labels and then the y predictions uh, the one we just uh, calculated for from forward propagation all right so then we have those uh, under that tape then we can do gradients are equal tape dot gradients and then we specified the loss and then model dot trainable weights. So uh, we basically want the gradients of, of the loss with respect to the trainable parameters then or the trainable weights rather. And then we're going to do optimizer dot apply gradients. We're going to do zip gradients model dot trainable weights. Uh, and then we're going to do accuracy metric dot update state y batch and then y prediction just so that we have a sense of what the accuracy was of that epoch so at the end here we're going to do training accuracy is equal to accuracy metric dot result and then we could print that so we could do accuracy over epoch and then we could just do uh, train accuracy like that and then we could reset the accuracy metric so that it's going to be uh, zeroed for the next epoch so accuracy metric dot reset states and that's it for the training loop so that's that's how it would look like it's 
very similar to the last video where we went through how to customize model.fit except now we're just removing the model.fit and we're just adding a loop here for the number of epochs that we want to train um, and then all we want to do is I guess uh, so test loop so this is for the training and then we're going to want to have a test loop to evaluate our model and then we don't need to run it for a couple of epochs we could just run through the uh, the data set once so we're going to do batch index and then x batch y batch in enumerate uh, ds test and i guess right now we're not using the batch index but i mean you could so yeah, i guess you could just iterate through the ds test as well there's no point of doing the enumerate but sometimes you want the batch index anyways uh, we don't need to do gradient tape we're not going to collect the gradients so we're just going to do what prediction is model of x batch training equals true and then accuracy metric dot update state y batch and then y prediction then in the end we could do uh, train accuracy is accuracy metric dot result right same as we did right here and then we could I guess we could print accuracy over test set and then we could just write training accuracy and then in the end we could again reset it um, we don't have to do this though since this, that's that's the last thing we're gonna do but anyways that's how it looks like if you want a training loop and a test loop of course you can also I mean you could I'll put this right here in a function like uh, define train or something and then you could uh, you know for epoch in range of you could just call that function um, train one epoch maybe and then run run it um, so you know you could think of the structure of how you could think of how you want to structure this but this is the fundamentals of how you do a training loop it's very simple we've done it in the most simple way that we can and of course, if you're doing something more complicated, like generative adversarial networks or GANs, then it's going to look more complicated than this. Uh, but it's still going to be a fundamentally the same method. And I think if you sort of understand this basic layout, then and then when you do more complicated things, it's going to help you and understand the general structure. All right. So first of all, we should run this and make sure that it works. Um, and it doesn't. So it has no attribute gradients. That's because we want to have a tape dot gradient. All right, and as we can see, we uh, it it makes sense. It's training, and uh, this works. Uh, so yeah. Uh, anyways, that's it for this video. Hopefully, you found this useful. Uh, if you have any questions, then leave them in the comment section below. Uh, I think I said thank you for watching, but thank you for watching, and uh, I hope to see you in the next video.